Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, February 20th, and it is an appropriately cold February day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Ah, uh, crazy weather. We've had temperatures in the 70s. Yesterday we had a snow squall. It's kind of funny. Uh, my wife and I were going to go out uh, shopping, pick up groceries and stuff, and we haven't been in a while, so we kind of needed to. And we're getting ready to go. We're just, we're just about, I mean, I put my coat on. We're about to walk out the door and both of our phones start going off with this alert. And I pull it out and it says, you know, uh, weather service alert, dangerous snow squall about to begin in your area. Zero visibility. Do not travel. Uh, you know, it's like very, very strong warning. And she gets it too. And we both read it. And I look up at her and I say, you know, should we? And she says, we need bacon. <laughs> so... We went out in this, and it was it was really interesting. It was it was warm. It was forty degrees, but it was snowing like crazy. Um, high wind. Uh, visibility was not great, but it wasn't so bad that you couldn't drive. And you know, she was fine. If if it got to be a problem, we would have pulled over. But yeah, it was it was just funny that the need for bacon was far greater than any potential safety concerns. <laughs> uh, so. Today is Sunday. Uh, enjoying my uh, one of my Irish seconds, and I've got some on the bookshop. Surprise, surprise! And thank you, Michael Case. So, a uh, couple of prayer requests I want to get in today before I get into the main topic. Uh, First is, as I think many of you know, our friend Everett Young, uh, his mom is not doing well. She uh, was hospitalized. She originally fell and broke her hip and she had to get surgery for that. She was hospitalized um, and then she, she was home and she started to get sick. I think she had trouble breathing. They took her to the hospital. Uh, they thought it was a blood clot and they did scans and stuff and actually it turned out to be pneumonia so she's hospitalized right now dealing with pneumonia um i talked to everett on friday night and you know he's he's got a very good realistic outlook uh, about this um it's not it's not positive right now you know given her age given her her general health and given the dangers of pneumonia um, so everett is um uh, worried but but he's in he's in good spirits about it um his dad is also you know obviously going to be is strongly affected by this and he said that his dad is also in a good place uh, with it all so he left on friday to go to his hometown where where she is uh the father got permission for her and for him and, and uh his brother to visit their mom um, which is another you know, indication that things might be rather serious. So he's there now. He left on, on yesterday morning. Uh, if things are good, he's planning to be coming back today and he has no internet access the whole time. So he said he'd try to give an update, uh, if possible today or tomorrow. Um, so just keep Everett and his family and his mom, of course, in your prayers, uh, good thoughts, all of that, uh, you know, and pray for the the best outcome, um, whatever that might be, you know, pray that the family is, is comforted and receives grace and, and love in this time when they need it. And, uh, that his mom is, is, uh, comfortable. And if, if healing is in God's plan that, that she'd be healed. Uh, the other prayer request I've got for you is our friend John the Bearded Welshman. Uh, I just found out this morning that John is also battling pneumonia. And, uh, you know, John's a, a young, healthy, strong guy, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to kick this, but it's, it's serious. Pneumonia is always serious. Um, so let's keep John in our prayers. And, and the same thing, you know, pray for healing, pray that God comforts him. Uh, and that, that comforts his family in this time. So thank you for uh, for that. And again, if you're not the praying sort, just think positive about them. Um, that works too. So. Ah, so 
this is going to be a ride. I was thinking about this this morning, and my my mind just went into a into a spiral. And I'm going to share it with you because you know I like doing that, and some of you like it when I do that. So there was some talk on the live stream on Friday about International Pipe Smoking Day. By the way, happy International Pipe Smoking Day, which is today, February 20th. And I've gone back and forth over the years on, on this whole thing. Uh, you know, whether it's something we should celebrate, whether, you know, is it just a thing that was made up by the tobacco industry, you know, all of that. And I actually looked into the history of it a couple years ago. I'll tell you more about that. But what came up on Friday, was some talk about it being related to J.R.R. Tolkien and the, the, the Hobbit, the Lord of the Rings, all of that stuff. Uh, that's not true. Okay, there's absolutely no relationship between International Pipe Smoking Day and Tolkien. Now, I, I like Tolkien. You know, I've, I've read um, the, 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 the canonical Tolkien books. I tried to read the Similarian and couldn't. It just was goofy. Um, but, you know, Lord, three, three books in the, in the trilogy and then The Hobbit. Uh, fantastic books. I read them when I was in grade school. I reread a couple of them later. Um, wonderful um, fantasy. Very well crafted. You know, Tolkien was a master. No question about it. And there's a lot of pipe smoking in those books. And that's nice. But to view Tolkien as some sort of pipe smoking mentor or god or something like that, just, there's enough in the pipe and the tobacco to keep you happy. You don't have to add this stuff. And that's always bothered me. So don't try to recast things into a model that fits with the fantasy that you've got about pipe smoking. Uh, if, if it makes you happy to smoke pipes and think about Tolkien, that's great. But it's not the reason we smoke pipes. And it's not, it's not the reason he wrote his books. And I think he'd be very disappointed to think that we were somehow turning it into that. Tolkien was a very deep thinker. Um, in Oxford Don, um, not by any means a lightweight when it came to literature, fiction, fantasy. Uh, he, he knew what he was doing, and he was very particular about his writing. Uh, he had a message. Anyway, what, what is the origin of International Pipe Smoking Day? So I, I looked this up a while back, I uh, did some research on it, and I put together a blog post back in 2018 and I'll link to that below if you're interested it's it's not much more information than what I'm going to give you now because I actually printed out from the blog post exactly what I wrote and you know this was compiled from multiple sources and and, and whatnot but um, so I'm going to just read it to you uh, because otherwise I'm going to have to be thinking too much while I talk so International Pipe Smoking Day was started in 2008 by a European internet community called the Smokers Forum. So the Smokers Forum, which was a internet forum type thing, decided to have an International Pipe Smoking Day. The date was chosen to commemorate the anniversary of the founding of the forum. So February 20th is the first, when this forum was started, and that was the date that they set as International Pipe Smoking Day. Uh, although I don't know that they called it International Pipe Smoking Day at the time. It was it was a pipe smoking day. So this was then adopted by an organization uh, called the Committee Internationale of Pipe Smoker Clubs, the CIPC. And I link to them in the in the blog post. This is a body representing over 30 countries, and they are primarily involved in organizing International Pipe Smoking Day events and slow smoke competitions. Um, so the U.S. branch of the CIPC is the United Pipe Clubs of America, or the UPCA. And again, there's a link in the blog post. According to the UPCA, 
The reason for International Pipe Smoking Day is an opportunity to show solidarity with pipe smokers around the world. Solidarity is the key word here and is defined as unity or agreement of feeling or action, especially among individuals with a common interest, mutual support within a group. In other words, it's a recognition of what we hold in common and a sharing of our common actions. Now this has been turned into something else in recent years. You know, it's been turned into, let's buy tobacco because it's on sale. Let's buy pipes because they're on sale. Like anything else, it's become commercialized. And that's fine. I actually placed an order for tobacco this morning, taking advantage of a sale. Uh, wanted some cube cut burley. And I got some cube cut burley and a couple of tins of things I wanted to try. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying you, you shouldn't do that. And I'm not in any way slighting the, the, the com companies that are doing it. You know, that's great. Take advantage of it. Uh, I understand that. But it's more than that. It's about the thing that ties us together. It's about solidarity as pipe smokers. It's about this thing in my hand that brings so many of us together. I mean, I wouldn't know any of you if it wasn't for the fact that we were fellow pipe smokers. And that's amazing to me. So that's what International Pipe Smoking Day is all about. And if you want to expand that to include Tolkien or uh, C.S. Lewis or sales at tobacco outlets or, you know, it's the day you have to go outside and smoke in public, great, you know, do it. But don't try to change the history. I don't like it when we change history. And that's what got my mind turning. And that's... It, the other thing that occurred to me is that, you know, tomorrow, Monday, is <clears throat> a holiday for me. I don't have to work tomorrow. I'm not going to work tomorrow. And that's because it is what is officially known as Washington's birthday. Now, George Washington, if, uh, for those of you in the U.S., you probably don't need to hear what I'm about to say, but maybe uh, some of you do, and maybe some folks outside the U.S. Uh, don't know. George Washington was an amazing man. Um, he was a fearless leader in battle. Uh, he was unbelievably popular. He was unanimously elected president twice. He was a good man. Um, he had slaves. He, he did have slaves, and that, that's a big deal with a lot of the early founding fathers that people point to and say, well, he wasn't that great of a It's my understanding that he inherited them, inherited them and in his will, he, he freed them, and he treated them well. That doesn't excuse the fact that he held slaves, but it shows you the kind of person he was, that he, he saw the injustice in it. At the time, it would have been very difficult to just say, no more slaves. It just, it would have been very difficult. Um, it would have been much better if he did, but he had to work within his time. And at least at his death, he did the right thing. He was unanimously elected president twice and was begged to run for re-election, and he refused. And the reason he refused is he was very sensitive to the fact that he could be made a king. And he knew that that's exactly why we had fought the Revolutionary War, that that would be a wrong thing to do. And he, he said that he thought it would be very bad if he died in office because that would give people the impression that the presidency was a lifetime appointment. So he refused to run for a third term. And that is why, for a very long time, there were only two-term presidents. Um, the first president to go for more than that was Roosevelt, and uh, they actually passed a law after that saying two terms was it. He couldn't, he couldn't go beyond that. And I think that's a good thing. I think that should probably be a thing throughout the government. Um, lifetime politicians are not helpful. So tomorrow is Washington's birthday. Now, when I was growing up, we actually had two holidays in February. We had Washington's birthday and we had Lincoln's birthday. 
Lincoln, I don't think I need to talk much about Lincoln, another great man, uh, amazingly uh, influential president, um, got us through the Civil War, um, freed, freed the slaves, ended slavery, obviously a very important figure in American politics and well-deserving of recognition. So we had these two holidays, and I believe it was in the, in the 80s, the late 80s maybe, um, there was a push to recognize uh, Martin Luther King Jr., another great man. And I remember when I was in college, so at the time, Martin Luther King Day, a, a day to remember and recognize Martin Luther King, was not a federal holiday. There were some states that had it as a holiday and some states that didn't. And Pennsylvania was a state that did not. I don't know how many did. I don't think it was a majority at the time, but it was, it was you know, enough that it was known that there were some places where this was considered a holiday. And I remember being at Temple University as an undergraduate and it was chaos on, on Martin Luther King Day, the, the day that was recognized by other states, because you'd have all these student protests and they'd sit in the streets and block the roadways and they refused to go to classes and all that because they wanted to have this recognized as a, as a holiday. And I, I thought back then, you know, how absurd this all was. And again, I think Martin Luther King Jr. was a great man who did some unbelievably important things and changed history without question, changed future history. But I used to think, you know, if, if Martin Luther King Jr. saw this, you know, saw these students sitting in the streets refusing to go to classes, he would have probably yelled at them and said, get your asses in the, <laughs> into those classrooms. You got it. If you want to remember me, better yourself, make yourself better. You know, don't, do something to help other people. But for goodness sakes, don't take a holiday. <laughs> don't stop doing everything that's important. And it always, I, I always thought that was funny that, you know, people saw it as a need to take the day off. In recent years, that's changed. You know, it's viewed as a day of service by a lot of people. And that's a good thing. Um, I always, I, I always used to. Uh, not in recent years, just because I'm getting old and lazy. But I always used to go to work on Martin Luther King Day. Not because I opposed the holiday, but because I opposed the idea that you would honor that man's legacy by not doing anything. You know, it's, it's like turning um, Veterans Day into a day to have a barbecue. You know, I just, I don't like that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean Veterans Day, I meant uh, Memorial Day. Um, so I would go to work and I would actually, you know, think about him and think about the things that he, he taught us, but I would do my job. I would get things done. I would accomplish things. Um, more recent years, you know, I do try to be involved in some active service if I can, but, uh, you know, again, I'm old and lazy and not not necessarily doing the best at that. Uh, but I like that trend. I like that people are now seeing it as a day of service because I think it's a better way to honor the man. There have been a lot of attempts to recast him. And you know, this is relatively recent history. There's been a lot of discussion lately about whether he was a Republican or a Democrat. Um, you know, he, according to his family, he was a Republican, but you got to understand in the, in the time, you know, how his politics were formed. You know, the Democrats at the time were the party of segregation, were the party that fought against the abolishment of slavery. They were the party of oppression. If you don't believe me, just look up George Wallace. You know, if you're not old enough to remember these things, that's what the Democratic Party stood for. And it's very unlikely that Martin Luther King Jr. would have would have affiliated himself with that party, um, but it doesn't matter. You know, he was he was very um, elusive 
about ever talking about politics in a way that supported a candidate. He did once or twice. He, he, he opposed Goldwater, and uh, that was very clear. But he, most of the time, he stayed out of politics because he thought there were things more important than politics. And uh, you know, it's one of the things I respect most about him. And I think more of us need to think that way about politics. It's not about party affiliation. Parties are needed to make the process work, but they don't, they're not needed to define how you think. And you know, I think we, we lose a lot when we look back in history and try to recast people into this mold or that mold. See them for who they are, who they were, and what they did. The reason I'm talking about Martin Luther King Day is that that led to a problem because now we had, when, when Martin Luther King Day became a federal holiday, we had three federal holidays in February, which wasn't going to work. So we had to get rid of one of them. Uh, Lincoln's birthday went south. Um, I don't know what the logic was there. And in recent years, Washington's birthday has been recast as President's Day. It's not President's Day. The federal holiday is Washington's birthday. Uh, even though it doesn't fall on Washington's birthday, which is kind of funny. I think Washington's birthday was the 22nd, I think. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not his birthday. But that's what the federal holiday is called, and that's what a lot of states, including Pennsylvania, call tomorrow. Why is it being called President's Day? Well, maybe it was because we didn't want to slight Abraham Lincoln's legacy, and that's a good thing. Some people say it's now not to honor Washington or Lincoln, but to honor the office of the president or to honor all presidents. I'd say in the last 50 years, there's been two presidents worth honoring. Other folks might disagree with me on that, but that's where I stand. And historically, we've had a lot of um, not so great presidents. Should we honor them? I don't know. But should we honor them at the expense of George Washington and at the expense of Abraham Lincoln? So when I hear people say President's Day, I think Washington and Lincoln. Um, it doesn't help to go back and recast these events. You know, there's a reason we honored Washington. There's a reason we honored Lincoln. Let's not lose that. Let's not lose the reason we honor Martin Luther King Jr. And let's not lose the reason we celebrate International Pipe Smoking Day. It's about solidarity. It's about the things we share in common. And I'll tell you, you know, I've talked about a lot of sort of borderline political issues there, and I may have made some of you riled up, and I may have made some of you happy. Uh, that's not my intention. My intention is to point out that throughout all of those things, we're all pipe smokers. And that has allowed us to be friends, regardless of our political beliefs, regardless of our religious beliefs, regardless of our skin color. We live in a world where we are almost forced to form camps, to, to join cliques, to be on this side or that side, to be polarized. Don't give in to that. People are, people are intrinsically good for the most part. There's a few bad eggs out there, but for the most part, people are intrinsically good and they want to do the right thing. And if two people disagree on what the right thing is, they should talk about that. They should come together. They should each get themselves a pipe, fill it with their favorite tobacco, sit down and have a smoke. Because as Einstein famously said, this lends to a quiet and contemplative uh, state of mind. Those weren't his words, but it was something like that. It gives you time to think. It slows you down and it brings you together with the other person. Well, folks, that's my ramble on International Pipe Smoking Day and many other things. I hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to your comments, whether you enjoyed it or not. Uh, just my opinion.
I am going to get some shop work done this morning. I'm, <laughs> that stem I was working on, I sanded through the, the airway yesterday. That's what I get for taking four weeks off. I'm out of practice. So I started over. Uh, I'm hoping to finish that today. And I'm going to take the rest of the day off. And tomorrow, we'll see what tomorrow brings. All right, friends, you all have a fantastic Sunday, and I hope you have a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.